as we look at the text here, we, we see a few things, right? Now, Jesus, this is the moment where I always, this church doesn't have a picture of Jesus on the wall, but where we have those artist depictions of Jesus, what do we usually see? We see either Christ hanging on the cross, or we see uh, the Messiah with a shepherd hook and some nice little sheep all in order. Something like this, right? This is the moment where the superhero action Jesus, the God of change, comes out. We only see the superhero action Jesus doing a few things that would be, we would call them, uncalled for in church, right? First of all, Jesus walks into the temple. He goes into Jerusalem. This is probably around Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday of Holy Week, that he walks into the temple. And he goes into the temple to see the temple. Remember, he's just at this point come in by donkey. Hosanna, they've laid down palm branches. Jesus comes in and he's got this huge, huge welcome. He comes into the temple a few days later and he sees the money changers. He sees tables set up. He sees people taking advantage of other people for a few dollars. He sees as they're coming in, they'll bring in their little dove, see? They'll bring in their, their, their animal. They're going to sacrifice and give for their, their sin offering, their atonement. And as they're giving their little sin offering, uh, little dove or whatnot, the money changers somehow say, that dove's not good enough. You need to follow this. You need to exchange your dove for this dove. A few dollars here, no money returned, and we'll take your old dove and give you a better dove. It's the first posse scheme ever. Okay? There was triangles with ends that never connected. As these doves and these things were being exchanged, they were being done in the name of God. They were being done in a forgiveness. Do you want forgiveness? Then you need to Get a better dove, not that one. See, look, the people were called by the Torah to bring their very best to God, bring the very best they had. But then somehow the church saw a way to make a few dollars off people, and they saw that, well, we can point out blemishes with their very best and offer them a more better. This week I was praying about the sermon title, and I must tell you, a three-year-old boy came up to me on Wednesday when I couldn't get a computer to work, looked right at me and goes, Pastor Tim, you got to be kidding me. And I thought, if Jesus was in the sanctuary, if Jesus was on the church property, how many times would Jesus walk in and say, you got to be kidding me? It was the voice of a baby that yet spoke so deeply to me this week. See, we do a lot of stuff right. And even back then, the Jews were doing a lot of stuff right. They were following the law pretty close. In fact, they were using the law to make a few bucks. Let me break this down. And I'm sure someone's not going to like it today. Are we doing the same? I've been asked by people, why do you not like fundraising in church? I'm going to shoot it straight with you. Because I always remember John chapter 2, verse 13 and 14, where Jesus knocked over tables. Because in the name of God, in the name of forgiveness, monies were being made. It's always concerned me when a church has to focus on the general budget to survive by fundraising. Because at that point, are we really fulfilling the mission that God has given us? Brothers and sisters, I speak to you plainly and clearly. Because if we want to see a church total revived, God's word never comes back void. There's been people before us done things. There's been people before us done things great and done things bad. There's been the church all through the nation of Israel that's followed God. They followed his word. They've done very well. Then they've turned away from his word and things have gone not so good. Then they've turned back to God and his word in repentance. And God has done very good things through them. Look, I just want to share this plainly with you. 
I've seen the power of God at work here. And I've also seen where we've worked out of fear. If we work out of faith, God can take this church and God will continue to build it. You know, think about it. Jesus flips over the tables, right? You've turned my father's house into a marketplace. Some will argue. They'll say, well, if we're not selling stuff in the sanctuary right here, then it's okay. The text teaches that it was on the temple courts. The temple courts are anywhere you bring the name of Jesus. In particular, it would be the grounds of the church. Wherever you take the church name to, now becomes a temple court. What I want to share with you is this. As we see what happened, and Jesus knocked some tables over, the people, the leaders in the church at that time, Jesus said, I'm going to tear this place down. What happened next? The leaders got together, they formed a committee, and they said, what's he talking about? Build it back in three days. Took us 46 years to build this temple. In 46 years, how's this man going to build this church in three days? See, Jesus was not speaking about a church building. Jesus was speaking about a community, a people that would follow him and take him at his word, a community that would see the love of Jesus, see the salvation, see a man that, that two or three days later was going to be wrongly tried, beaten, sold out by one of his own for 30 coins, have to carry the cross of crucifixion, carry it up on a hill, have another man help him, Simon of Cyrene, to carry the cross. Been, they just about beat the Messiah to death before he made it to the hill. See, that this is what Jesus knew was going to happen. He would suffer death so that you may have the keys of life. This Jesus was so much in love with his Father because he is part of the Father. He is so much in love with you because you were created in the image of God. He is so much in love with the fact that he died. The Bible teaches he went down to the depths, to Hades. We may word it as hell. He obtained the keys of life. Was he down there all three days? We could argue that all day. I believe he was there 15 minutes, took care of the devil by himself, and came back. But there's no timeline. Three days, Jesus. Sunday morning, from Friday to Sunday, Jesus now, raised from the death, holding the keys to life. The same guy that knocked over a couple tables and told the folk, stop doing this, raised the church within the week. I'm not going to tell you to stop fundraising, but I'm going to ask you to read the Bible. I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to ask you as a church community to see what God can do. I'm going to ask you to find in the Bible where God has blessed communities that have given, that have changed philosophy, that have done things drastic to show the love, to show repentance in their community. I just want to share God's word today. What you do with it is up to you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time we have in a short moment of a meditation sermon today. Lord, as we roll into communion, as we roll into an opportunity that we can really receive forgiveness, have a moment of repentance, and Father God, we can realize the truth truth of love which comes from Jesus Christ God we know that Jesus knocked a few tables over because the church was receiving monies from their neighbors taking monies from their neighbors rather than expressing the love of Jesus rather than offering encouragement rather than leading them back to you father Lord, simply put today, 
Not one of us is perfect in this room. But we know all of us can have a different path. We can be justified by our faith in Jesus Christ, which comes by asking forgiveness for our shortcomings. Father, as we get ready to receive communion today, I do pray for this church, for each person here. I also pray for those that are not here. Lord, I pray for those that either have scattered or you have spread to different areas for evangelical work. Lord, I pray for healing. I pray for unity. I pray for peace. I pray this and we pray this now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen.